Hi everyone. This is our second video on producing an efficient frontier in Excel. In the first video, we have a, we had allowed short selling when tracing the efficient frontier. In this video, we would like to show you what happens when short selling is not allowed. So, how would the shape of the efficient frontier change if we if there's no short selling in a particular market? So, we are going to be using the same spreadsheet. Uh, which is downloadable if you look at the video description for the link. And I will give a very quick recap of uh, uh, how we traced the efficient frontier last time. But if you have already watched the previous video, you can just jump to the next section, just look at the thumbnails. So what we did last time was to produce an efficient frontier in a market with 10 stocks. So these are the returns of those 10 stocks. I've used a 10-year uh, period and monthly returns, but you can use any number of uh, stocks and any sample period. You can use weekly, daily returns, doesn't really matter. So this was our sort of um, initial data set. Then to trace the efficient frontier, what we did was for each stock, we needed two pieces of information, their average return over this period, right? So that's what we did here and the measure of risk, which we took as the volatility of the returns. So we've used the standard deviation function here. Okay? So for each stock, we've got our return and risk measures, but we need one more thing, which is what we call the variance covariance matrix. So what this matrix does is for each pair of stock, it computes uh, the covariance um, between the two stocks involved. Okay, And sometimes this is called um, bordered covariance matrix because I have some additional cells over here which will help me to compute portfolio risk. Okay, So these are the ingredients we need, return for each stock, risk for each stock, and the variance covariance matrix. Then using that, we have computed portfolio return and portfolio risk by choosing some weights. And initially, you can just uh, choose these weights randomly. For example, you can start with uh, an equally weighted portfolio doesn't really matter because in the next step, we use the solver to start tracing this portfolio. So what solver does is for each level of return, so you specify that. So for example, we will set the return equal to 0 0.01 to, to begin with. Um, it will minimize the risk of the portfolio. So the objective is to minimize the risk of the portfolio, right? So this is objective here and then uh, by changing it will do that by changing the weights of each stock in the portfolio so these are the cells selected and there will be two constraints so we will set the portfolio return equal to 0 0.01 it's not equal to 0 0.01 now but once the solar works it will because this is a hard constraint and the investment weights will add up to one or 100 percent okay now, when we allow short selling, the key thing is not to check this box. Okay, so this is how we solve this. So let me quickly show you that. So the solver has worked, come up with a solution, which we would like to keep. keep. And as you can see, it has set the portfolio return to 0.01, so 1%. You can see that the investment weights have changed and they add up to one. And you can see both positive and negative weights. So positive weights are long positions and negative weights are short positions. And we have recorded this over here. If you uh, haven't watched the previous video, you can see how we have done that. And we've, we've done this for six different levels of return. And you can do more. So this is entirely up to you how you want to trace the efficient frontier. If you want a nicer shape, you can put additional data points. But for our purposes, I used 1% increments so we have started from 1% and traced it all the way up to 6%. So this was our efficient frontier with short selling. Now, what if short selling is not allowed? Okay. So how will the efficient frontier change and how are we going to trace it? The change you need to do is very, very simple. All you need to do is go to Solver and click this box. So it says here, make unconstrained variables non-negative. So what it will do now is that it won't allow any negative weights over here. 
right? So that, that means short selling won't be allowed. So all weights will be either zero or positive. So let's quickly do this and get our first data point. So as you can see, we have found a solution which we would like to keep. And these are the weights we've got. As you can see, there are no uh, negative weights. There are quite a few zero weights. So which means that for the first portfolio, you got long position in four of the stocks and no position in the remaining six stocks, okay? And the uh, return of this portfolio is 1%, which is what we wanted, and this is the risk. As you can see, when you compare this with the risk of the efficient frontier with short selling, this is higher, right? That's because we have added an additional constraint. We are forcing these variables not to become negative. And as a result, we are getting slightly averse portfolio. So same level of return, right? But slightly higher risk. So this will be our first data point. And I've already, to save time, I've started recording them over here. So this is exactly what we have seen now, right? So this is the 1% return. And these are the investment weights. So long positions in four, four stocks and no position or zero position in the remaining weights. So let's do this again. So let's go to solver. So to trace it, what we need to do, we need to change the target level of return. Simple as that. So let's change this to the point two. So let's set the portfolio return to 2%. And we will get a new position, a new portfolio. As you can see, the weights have changed. So the return is 2% and this is the risk. And as you can see again, uh, the risk of this portfolio is pretty close to the one with short selling, but still slightly higher, okay? Old, and I've copied down, that one down here. So now I, I have long position in nine out of 10 stocks. So this portfolio doesn't contain stock three and its return is 2% and this is its worth. So let's keep going. So I'm gonna do now the next uh, data point, which is of course setting this to 3%. Yeah. Again, run the solver, keep the solution. So as you can see, these are the new weights. Again, I have already copy pasted them here. Now the return has increased to 3% and the risk is 9% which as you can see is again higher than the case with short selling, okay? And the portfolio composition has changed a lot as well, okay? Now the next bit will be interesting. So we've done 0 0.1, so 1%, 2%, 3%. Let's do 4%. And we will see something different now. Set this to 4%. Ask solver to solve it. And as you can see, it says Solver could not find a feasible solution, right? Still click OK here, and let's try to understand why. Look at what Solver gave us. It puts zeros in all stocks except stock 9, which has a, a return of 3.8%. So in our sample, this is the stock with the highest return. So it's this data point, point here, so this... Um, this is stock nine, right? 3.8% return, 16% volatility. So why is that? So we want a portfolio return of 4%, which was possible with short selling, but it's, not, it's no longer possible if we don't allow short selling because this is the stock with the highest return. So to obtain a 4% return, which is higher than this, we need to go short in some of the stocks. And if we don't allow short selling, then the uh, solver can't find the solution. So the best we can do is to hold stock nine. That gives the highest return. But we, we can never reach 4% in the absence of short selling. So I have recorded that over here. Okay. So this is the um, portfolio where we only hold stock nine because that's the stock with the highest return. And to get a nice shape, I've also created an intermediary portfolio uh, with 3.5% return. And as you can see, this is also quite heavily invested in stock nine because we are approaching uh, the highest return uh, without short sell. So the last thing I would like to do 
is to plot the efficient frontier without short selling to compare it with the one with short selling. So this is what we had produced last time. So let's see how our new efficient frontier will look. And to do that, go to chart design, select data, and we are going to add a new series. So X values is our volatilities, okay? And our Y values will be these returns. Here we are. Okay, and let me just concentrate here so you can see it better. So these gray points now represent the efficient frontier without short selling. So let's connect those points. It looks nicer. And here we are. So as you can see, let me try to zoom in better. You can close this as well. Yeah, here we are. As you can see, efficient frontier is, of course, better with short selling. So for example, if you look at this portfolio, this has 5% return for the same level of risk of a portfolio here, which only offers about 3.8% return. Okay, so this one really dominates this one. So allowing short selling yields to a better efficient frontier. And one more thing, without short selling, we can't go past this point because this is exactly the stock with the highest return. So if I don't allow short selling, I can't go right, right? I need to stop here. This is the furthest I can go. But with short selling, I can go as high as I want by taking short positions in the other stocks, right? And initially, the two frontiers are quite close to each other, right? But as the return increases, clearly the one with um, short selling becomes uh, much better than the one without short selling. All right, that's all I want to cover in this video. Uh, in separate videos, we will also show you how to compute the minimum variance portfolio and the optimal risk portfolio. So keep watching the space and see you guys in, in the next video.